Hi guys, welcome to Learn Electronics Repair. This is part two of the tutorial, how to read schematics. In part one, we looked at the symbols for all of the passive components and I called pseudo passive components. So hopefully you've watched that one first. In this part, we're going to look at the symbols for active components. And in part three, we will look at the schematics themselves and learn how to follow a schematic. Active components then, they fall roughly into three types. So we have diodes, we have transistors, we have MOSFETs, and we can also consider some more. So we also have voltage regulators, which are a specific type of component. We have integrated circuits in particular, op amps, which have their own symbol, logic ICs, which have their own symbols again, and we'll just put generic ICs. This is all the rest of them. Also in diodes, there are some components that we will put as subsets as diodes, although in some respects, they could be subsets of transistors. But in here we will have SCR or thymistor. We will have triac, diac, and a few other variants as well. So let's start by learning the symbols for all these components and put together with part one. We then effectively have the alphabet of schematic symbols, and that's what we need to start with. So diodes. Well, the symbol for a diode is this. And a diode passes current in one direction. If we are talking conventional current, this is imaginary current, if you like, positive to negative, then the current flows in the direction of the arrow in the symbol. That way, yeah. Also, if we look at the diode physically, there is normally a colored band at one end of it or a stripe at one end of it and that band is the same position as the line in the symbol okay so there is a diode again there can be some slight variations as we saw in part one but they're really not important in particular the arrow can be colored in solid like so it's still a diode we then have a number of components built on this but all the diodes effectively will have this symbol in them a common one you see and it is a symbol in its own right is a bridge rectifier this is actually a small circuit but it can also be encapsulated into one unit and it consists of four diodes wired in a particular way like so remember to put the lines on them okay and then to go in the opposite way this circuit is used to convert AC to DC so here we have two terminals AC AC and here we have plus and minus so that is a symbol in its own right to be quite honest Quite often on a schematic you will see this. It may be physically made up of four individual discrete diodes. It may be one encapsulated unit. And sometimes you will see a simplified version of this. So you will see a bridge rectifier like so, just a box, AC, AC. That's supposed to be a little sine wave by the way, plus, minus. So you will sometimes see that as well. These are bridge rectifiers. What other sorts of diodes do we have? Well, quite a few, but some are more common than others. So, very common one. We've all seen them. The light emitting diode. Any symbol you see with arrows pointing away from it, whatever the component is, light emitting. And like the resistors and capacitors, you will find these symbols 
pointing in either direction, depending how the schematic is laid out. You will find them pointing upwards. You will find them pointing downwards on schematics. The orientation is not relevant. It's relevant to the circuit, but these are all, for example, LEDs. Wherever we stick the arrows, it doesn't really matter. These are LEDs. Okay? L E D. Another common diode we have is the Schottky diode. This is a special low voltage drop fast switching diode and the symbol for a Schottky diode. By magic, I've just drawn some for you Schottky diodes, one horizontal, one vertical. I hope to spell this right. The two T's are K and a Y. I'm pretty, uh, we'll find out, okay. So those are Schottky diodes. Similar to this symbol, but a completely different component, we'll find the Zener diode. So a Zener diode actually is used as a voltage reference normally, or to hold a voltage to a certain level. We won't go into the function of these components in this video, but this symbol, And this symbol are Zener diodes. They're interchangeable again, you will find both in common use. So those are some diodes, but we have more. Related very much to the Zener diodes are the TVS diodes, transient voltage suppressors. Now these can either be unidirectional or bidirectional. So the unidirectional and the bi, the unidirectional has a symbol like this. But to be quite honest, sometimes the symbol looks just like a Zener diode symbol, okay? This can also be filled in in black as well. So this is a unidirectional, and the bidirectional is just two of these effectively back to back. So with a bidirectional TVS diode, you will have the same sort of symbol. But with two diodes on it like so, and to be quite honest, this also, you will see it's drawn like so. Bidirectional TVS, transient voltage suppressor. It's like a bidirectional Zener diode, pretty much, to be quite honest, this one. Other types of diodes you'll see, probably in order of likelihood of seeing them, are these ones. So you will see a silicon controlled rectifier, S. CR, otherwise known as a thyristor. Again, it can be drawn in any direction. Anode, cathode, gate. This is like a switchable diode, basically. So it conducts current in one direction, like a normal diode, as long as there is a voltage on the gate. The gate turns the diode on or off. So we have that one. The very similar triac, which is just a bi-directional one of these, basically. Usually these are marked main terminal one, main terminal two, but they could be effectively anode one, anode two, and this is gate. So this is just really a bi-directional one of these. When it is enabled with the voltage on the gate, it will now pass current in both directions. Again, I will not go into the actual ins and outs of the components. I've made videos on all of these. I will link them into the description to this video. If you want to know more about any of them, you can look at those videos. There's another one similar to the triac called the diac. I'll draw this horizontally, but it could be vertically just the same. Uh, this one. like so. This is like a triac, but it doesn't have a gate. It turns on at a certain voltage. So once the voltage across it reaches a certain point, it becomes like a short, it turns on. This is a diac, and these are often used in circuits to switch these, by the way. You may come across 
photo diodes. Arrows pointing inwards, if you saw part one, means the device is photosensitive. It's like the opposite of an LED. It doesn't emit light. It's sensitive to light. Effectively, you shine the light on it, it will switch on. You can have photothyristors, phototriacs, and all these are achieved basically by adding arrows to the symbols pointing inwards. The direction doesn't really matter. So every time you see the arrows pointing towards the device, you should know it's photosensitive. Pointing outwards, it emits light. Talking about emitting light, there's a special type of LED called a laser LED. It has a symbol of its own, which is this one. Okay, that is a laser. LED. These I just mentioned, arrows pointing in, are all photosensitive. Or light activated, if you like. There are a couple more I will mention, but I don't think you're likely to come across either of these, unless maybe in radio frequency circuits, that's where they tend to be used. One of them is a special type of diode called a tunnel diode, and a tunnel diode has a symbol like so. And the other one is a very cap diode. This is a diode where the capacitance, it acts like a capacitor, and the capacitance changes by the voltage applied across it. These are used in tuning circuits, mainly in UHF and VHF receivers, and upwards frequencies from that, so you will possibly come across the very cap diode, but only if you're working on those sort of devices. That is not all of the diode types you may come across, but those are the ones you're most likely to come across, and some of these are not particularly likely anyway, okay? So that's diodes. Also, SCRs, thyristors, triacs, diacs. So the next thing to look at are transistors. Now, transistors roughly fall into two groups. You have bipolar transistors, and you have MOSFET transistors. In fact, MOSFET is metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. So we'll look at the bipolar ones first, the related devices, and then we'll look at the MOSFETs. Bipolar transistors then. B, J, T. Bipolar junction transistor. These come in two types. One is called NPN, and the other one is called PNP. And the difference between the two, effectively, is the polarity in which they work. I made a whole video about these transistors, which I'll give a link from here. What we're really interested in today is the symbols. But if you want to know how they work, have a look at some of the videos linked from the description of this one. Symbol for the transistor. So NPN is like so, with an arrow pointing outwards. These are three pin devices. This is called the base, or just B. This is called the collector, or just C. And this is called the emitter, or just E. Okay, those are your three pins. Quite commonly, this symbol has a circle around it. like so and it may be marked or may not be marked on the schematic ebc again these transistors can be any way around you like so don't be surprised if you find a transistor like this on the schematic it's still an npn transistor this is still the collector this is still the base this is still the emitter the reason they get drawn in different directions is just to do with the layout of the schematic, the way that the wires connect together, basically. It's just to make it the schematic easier to read, okay? But they're still NPN transistors. PMP, very similar. The difference with the PMP transistor is that the arrow points inwards, okay? And again, with or without the circle, 
bass, collector, emitter. In particular, PMP transistors are often drawn the other way up on the schematic. Like so. But this also is more to do with the flow of the circuit, the design of all the tracks, of all the wires effectively, rather than any other reason. And don't be surprised when you find them the other way round. It again is just to make the schematic easier to read, the layout is better. So these are your transistors, NPN. P and P. There are a few other devices we should consider. One of them is the Darlington transistor. So an actual factor Darlington transistor is two transistors in one package. It still has three pins, base collector emitter, but it contains two transistors. They can be NPN or PMP. And I'll show you the symbol. This is an NPN one. I'll just make sure I get it right, by the way. There we go, it's all joined up in the end, okay? Usually this symbol will have a circle around the whole thing, like so, which indicates it's encapsulated in one unit, base, collector, emitter, and PN. And the PMP is basically the same thing, just with the arrows pointing the other way. And there we have a PMP Donaldson transistor. Again, because of the design of the circuits, usually this is drawn the other way up. Like so, but it's still a Darlington PMP. The idea of a Darlington transistor, by the way, is it effectively multiplies the gain of each transistor. So if this transistor has a gain of 100 and this has a gain of 100, the total gain in current from the base emitter, base collector current, is 100 times 100, or 10,000. Before we move on to MOSFETs, there are a couple more we should put in here for completion, mainly. So these are not common components, but we have unijunction transistors. Commonly shortened to UJT, unijunction transistor, we have Just make sure the arrow is visible. Emitter. And then these terminals are called base 2 and base 1. Okay. As before, the symbol can be in a circle. So we have this one. This is a unijunction transistor. And we have something called a programmable unijunction transistor, or PUT. This is more related to your SCR, your thyristors we were looking at. The symbol is very similar to that one, actually. But whereas a thyristor has the gate here, this has the gate here. The pins are still called anode, cathode, and gate. So whether you want to consider this to be like a transistor, programmable unijunction transistor, or like an SCR, silicon control rectifier, is entirely up to you. I've not done any videos on these type of components, so I think I'll actually do that at some point. We'll make videos on these, they're not so common, but let's learn what they do, okay? Now we'll talk about the field effect transistors, FET. In particular, MOSFET. But we'll also talk about JFET. And another similar related device called an IGB. T or insulated gate bipolar transistor. Okay, so what are all these? What do the symbols look like in particular? Well, we'll start with the JFET. These are not common components again. You may come across them, but they really aren't common. So the symbol for the JFET is this one. 
or the other way round. We'll put the circles on because they normally have them. And there we have it. This pin is called the gate again. And these are the drain and source. So those are your J fets or junction fets. This is another component which are not common, but I will get some of these and we'll have a look at them. We'll make a video. So if we do ever come across any of them, we will understand them. Just before I move on, by the way, and I mentioned the unijunction transistor previously, what I didn't mention is they come in N channel and P channel. So the one that I actually drew was the P channel and the N channel just as the arrow the other way around. Okay. So that's for completeness before somebody comments on it, which I'm sure they will do, or they would have done. With the MOSFETs, the symbol for the MOSFET is actually quite complex, but it's usually simplified. So I'll draw you the simplified version and the full version. Use whichever you prefer. I use the simplified one myself, but at least you'll recognize the different types if you come across them. So MOSFETs come, if you like, into four types. So we basically have depletion and enhancement. Most MOSFETs are enhancement MOSFETs. What this actually means is when you apply a voltage to the gate, you turn the MOSFET on. So you apply a voltage to turn it on to increase the conduction. With a depletion type, it's conducting naturally, and you apply a voltage to decrease the conduction, okay? And each of these ones come into both P-type and N-type for both, okay? P, N. So we have four symbols, basically. We'll start with the enhancement MOSFETs because these are the most common. So enhance N type. You will see the symbol in various ways. This is just a simplified version of the symbol. So with the simplified one, you have an arrow here pointing inwards. Okay. This is the drain. This is the source and this is the gate. With the more complete version of this, I'll draw it a little bit bigger because it's quite a bit to this one. Again, we have the arrow pointing in. And then we see from here, what looks like a Schottky diode to there. Source, drain, gate. Both of these are N-channel MOSFETs. This diode is called a parasitic diode and it exists in all MOSFETs even if you see this symbol it's just saving the hassle of drawing that basically. You'll sometimes see the gate drawn with the line in the middle of it like so. This doesn't make any difference, it's just a different version of the symbol, basically. And there we have it. That's the N type. The P type are the same with the arrow reversed, but not this reversed. So with the P type, enhancement MOSFET, you will have the gate. And you have an arrow here pointing outwards to there. And the same applies with this one. But with this one, this does not reverse. So with the P-type, again, I'll try to draw it big enough.
like so. Okay. As before with all of the symbols, we will commonly find there's a circle around it. It's optional, yeah. One thing you might have noticed if you sort of sharp eyed with this. When we have bipolar transistors, the NPN has the arrow pointing outwards and the PMP has the arrow pointing inwards. With this, if you like, it's kind of back to front. So the N type doesn't have the arrow in the same direction as the NPN. It's the same direction as the PMP. And the P type arrow pointing outwards has the same direction as the NPN. You see, I found that confusing when I first learned all these, the direction of the arrow. I actually think it's a bit of a pain in the butt. Why not do in the same direction? So N type is synonymous of NPN and P type is synonymous of PMP in the symbols, but for whatever reason, no. So those are your enhancement MOSFETs. The depletion MOSFETs, I won't draw all of them because it's a simple rule. And this also explains the dotted line here. So with a depletion MOSFET, we have a solid line here. Okay? We still have the arrow here. Exactly the same as we did with these ones. So this is, in fact, a P-type. The N-type would have the arrow up the opposite way. But the difference is that we have a solid line here. Sometimes drawn as a heavier line, by the way, like so. Sometimes these dotted bits are drawn heavier, like so. Because I've made a mess of it now. Okay. If you think about it, the enhancement one, that's why it has the dots in here. So when you put voltage on the gate, you complete this circuit. You enhance the flow. With the depletion one, it's already a solid line. Imagine if you put a voltage on, you break it up. Yeah, that's why we have that symbol. So all the variants here of the enhancement MOSFETs can be drawn as depletion ones, but we have a solid bar there rather than the broken dotted bar. There, I've made a much better after putting the heavy emphasis on the bar, okay? So that is your MOSFETs. So lastly, in these, we will learn about the IGBT. The IGBT, Insulated Gate Bipolar Transistor. This is effectively like a transistor with a MOSFET driving the base. So there's effectively no current going in on the base circuit. These components are used in very fast switching circuits automotive electronics in particular, that sort of thing, electronic ignition systems. You may well not come across them, but the symbol is this. And the terminals are called gate, collector, emitter, which emphasizes the fact this is a cross between a MOSFET and a bipolar transistor. There's another symbol you might see for the same components. I'll just show you this one. This one's more fiddly to draw, so I tend to draw the other one. Okay. And again, we have gate, collector, emitter. So that's the IGBT. The next thing we will move on to is integrated circuits, but just before I forget, we'll do opto isolators also, because these are common components. You will see the symbols for these often. So we have a standard opto isolator with the photo transistor. The arrows representing the light that shines on the phototransistor. And the two other common variants of this one. So we'll just show you. One is this one. And 
which is an opt-out thigh vista. Remember the symbol for the thigh vista. And lastly, almost forgot the arrows, by the way. Draw it without making a mess, okay? Better. This symbol is an opto triac. Opto triac. Again, of course, with the arrows. Opto thyristor. Or SCR, of course. Um, but we don't call this an opto transistor because an opto transistor is a sort of device of its own right, really. We call this an opto isolator. Okay, now let's move on to integrated circuits. ICs. Most integrated circuits ICs are just shown as a rectangle with lines representing the pins, the pin numbers, and sometimes signal names. But there are a few which have their own symbols in their own right, so we'll talk about those ones now. The first ones are voltage regulators. These are linear voltage regulators, as opposed to book regulators, which is a different topic. Voltage regulators generally have a symbol like this. If it's a fixed voltage regulator, in, out, and ground. Okay, and often you'll see the pin numbers as well. One, two, three, written by it. Variable voltage regulators. Like this. In, out, and ADJ for adjust. Okay. Again, you'll often find the pin numbers, whatever they happen to be off. For example, one, three, two. They can be different orders. Okay. Another common type of linear voltage regulator is this one. So I'll just draw it for you. These are generally surface mounted devices. In ground enable, feedback out, okay. This type of symbol, the labels may well be on the outside. They don't have to be on the inside. We can draw it again. Also, the space of the pins may be different, okay? And we can see in, ground, enable, EN, feedback, out. So this is another common type of voltage regulator symbol you will see. Other specialized ICs, if you like, are op amps, or operational amplifiers. These have their own symbol. The symbol looks like this. So we'll have inputs. It looks like they are plus and minus, but this is non-inverting and inverting. This is the output. Quite often, the op amps come two or four in one package. So you'll have, for example, a 14-pin IC with four of these in, or an eight-pin IC with two of these in. Now, in that case, they will appear on the schematic in a certain way. So a dual op amp, which is usually an eight pin device, you will find this. And then somewhere else on the circuit, close by or not necessarily, you will find this. And these effectively are the two op amps. You will have the plus and minus, plus and minus, one of them will be numbered, for example, three, two, one, the pins, depending on the pin out for the op-amp. The other one would be labeled usually five, six, seven. Okay, I'm gonna check now, I've got the plus and minus is the right way around. Well, actually, probably more by luck than judgment I did, and these other two lines will be the power usually four, which is ground, and eight, which is VCC. So you will often see that. And then 
To tell you that both these op amps are physically in one 8 pin package, this would be for example IC3A, IC3B, or another common nomenclature if you like is U3A, U is commonly used for an IC, U3B. Okay, so that's op amps. Obviously, a quad one, you would find U3A, B, C, and D. Usually one of the four symbols that make up the quad op amp will show the voltage rails, which is what these are. This one is ground, and this one is VCC, or for that matter, depending on the circuit. Plus, or VCC, and minus or VSS sometimes called, yeah. So you'll usually find that on one of the symbols, but not on all of them in a multi op amp package. So that's op amps. There are another group of ICs which have their own symbols, and these are logic gates. Again, these commonly come with two, four, six gates all the same in one package and they will use the same method as this like u3a u3b u3c and so on to donate they're all part of the same package but independent gate circuits so your logic gates first one is the buffer it looks like an op amp but only with one input okay this is a buffer or buff as it's called for short you will find a NOT gate or an inverter. The inverter is denoted by the circle on the end of the triangle, which tells us this inverts the output. So effectively with this one, a high voltage impulse, say if it's five volt logic, five volts here gives you five volts here. On this one, five volts here gives you zero here, zero here gives you five here. This is a NOT gate. Then we have AND gates. This is an AND gate. With the AND gate, basically you need to have a high or a voltage, say 5 volts on both inputs, and you get 5 volts on the output. Otherwise, you'll have zero on the output for all other combinations here. So that's an AND. I made a whole video about these, by the way. I will link it again at some point in this. This is a NAND which is an inverted AND, not AND, NAND, okay? We have OR gates, which this is the symbol, inputs and outputs, or either one input or the other, or both for that matter, have to be high, five volts for the output to be five volts. If they're both low, this will be zero. Low, okay? OR. We have a NO gate, which is simply an OR gate with an inverter on the end of it. So it inverts the logic. In this case now, the output will be high if both inputs are low, okay? Or other combinations will have an output low, zero volts. So that is the NO. We have the exclusive OR. There's only two more of these, by the way, guys. This is an exclusive OR, that's not an arrow by the way, it's just I didn't draw it very well. Okay, that is an exclusive OR gate. The output is high if either of the inputs is high, but not if neither or both are high, okay? Only if one or the other is high, it's high. And we have the last one, which is the X no, which you guess you knew this was coming. with the inverter on the end. So this just inverts the logic of this one. Okay, so those are the symbols for the logic gates. These, by the way, don't have to have two inputs. A buffer and a knot will always have one input, or the rest will always have at least two, but could have more. So there's no reason why you can't have, for example, a four input or however many input and gate or a four input NAND gate, okay? 
those are logic gates. All of the rest of the ICs are represented by a square box or a rectangular box. Now with ICs, the function will vary from one device to another. They're all individual devices. You will see the connections on the IC and they will have pin numbers on. But the pin numbers are not necessarily in the same order as the pins on the device physically, okay? So this could be pin 1, 6, 7, for example, 8, 4, what else do we have? 2, 3, yeah. 2, 3, this is typical for an IC. And these pins will normally have names the numbers could be on the outside or the inside and these will normally have names so for instance that could be out this could be chip select this could be feedback this could be in a input one in b input two and so on yeah the numbers as i say and the names could be either side but they won't be mixed up like this the numbers will either all be on the outside of the box or all on the inside and the labels the same yeah VCC, why not? Power, ground, okay? Now, there's a convention with these labels which you need to know, and that is that sometimes you will find labels, in fact, often with a bar over the top of them. What that means is it means that signal is active low. Now, I've drawn it in a rather silly place here because feedback is normally a varying input, yeah? So, let's get a bit sensible. We won't put it there. We'll put the bar on chip select. So, in this case now, pin 6 has to be low, 0 volts to select the chip. It's now active, and then you can send your inputs in, and depending on the feedback, you'll get an output, for example, okay? This convention there's a few different ways to do it so if you see anything like cs or rst normally reset chip select en and enable if you see a label like this on the schematic that is telling you that that signal or rather the effect of that signal whatever it does selects the chip enables the chip resets the chip that function happens when the signal is low You'll sometimes see it done like this. Just a different convention, it means the same thing. I've seen it done like this. And I've seen it done like this. Okay, all those just mean that that signal is active when it's low. Guys, you now know more than likely all the symbols you need to know to understand schematics. But this is like learning the alphabet, as I said in part one. This is like learning A, B, C, D through to Z. Or even, and I don't know how many people can do this, Z, Y, X, W, V, U, T, S, R, Q, P, O, N, M, L, K, J, I, G, F, E, D, C, B, A. I went to that as a child, by the way. Probably didn't have much to amuse myself. My sisters can do that. So this is the alphabet. And I can do the alphabet forwards or backwards. I know the schematic symbols inside and out. So these are the things you need to know regarding the symbols. You may not remember them all at once, but I'm pretty sure you will shortly start to remember all of them. But this is just the beginning. What we need to do now is understand schematics, okay? So in the next part, we'll have looked at a few schematics. We'll look a little bit more into these signal naming conventions, which are important how the lines are drawn on schematics, some different ways of doing that. And then we'll start to look at some of the basic building blocks of circuits because understanding the schematic is not only knowing what the symbols mean, it's understanding what the components in certain configurations are doing, okay? And that's the next and the big step. Once you get that one under your belt, you can read schematics like a pro. Okay, I hope you're looking forward to that. That one's coming in the next few days. I'm gearing myself up to doing it. And hopefully I'll see you all soon on another Learning Electronics Repair video. Ciao for now, guys.